my lovelies, I hope you're all well. Don't forget to subscribe, hit the notification bell, give the video a thumbs up, and if you want to, leave a comment. So today we're gonna look at how you bring in a JPEG or a PNG. And we're also gonna look at the difference between them as well. So they're very, very similar files. JPEG and PNGs are both flat layer images. So they are basically a picture of something. They are single layer. With a JPEG, you have to remove the background. With a PNG, it's already done for you. Now there are benefits to using JPEG and PNG. Sometimes something is only available in a JPEG or PNG and you can actually make them multi-layer, which I'll show you in a follow-up video. But today I wanted to show you how you bring them in. Now this design does actually have an SVG version as well, but we're going to pretend it doesn't. I've got credits as part of my subscription, so I'm just going to purchase it with a credit and then confirm. And I can then download the file. So if I click download, I can then download it. And it will start downloading on my Windows computer. Once it's downloaded, you'll see there's three circles here. I'm going to select those and show in folder. I can open the folder up. And you'll see with this one, we've got JPEG, PNG and SVG. We're going to bring in the JPEG. And what I like to do is actually move them across to my pictures. So I'm going to actually hold down my shift key and select them all. And then I'm just gonna drag them across to my pictures so that I can easily find them when I'm in design space. So we've got design space open. I'm going to go to upload upload image, browse, and it tells you the file types that you can bring in. We're going to select one of those JPEGs. Let's go for number one and open. And you'll see it comes up with a image type menu. You always want to choose complex, especially if you're going to bring in an image for print and cut, but complex will give you as close a replication to the original file as possible. So always, always select complex and then continue. We're going to zoom out so we can see what's going on. Now, if I simply go to continue at this point, because it's a JPEG, you'll see for our cut, we just get a solid black square. So we need to go back and we actually need to remove the background. So you'll see along here, we've got a select and erase tool and we've got an eraser and a crop as well. So we're gonna start with just the select and erase. So if I click the white background, it will take it away. You'll see that there's still some white bits left. So again, if we go to continue, we can now see from the cut where it will cut and where it will be solid. So if we go back and we zoom out, we can start removing some of those other white pieces. But of course we've got a choice. So if I wanted a solid horn, for example, I just don't remove that white. I am going to remove it though. So I'm just going to select it. And I'm, all I'm gonna do is come in and everywhere that's white, I'm going to remove it. The other thing that we've got is the eraser. So for example, if there's some cuts in there that I maybe wouldn't want, I can come in and erase them. So I'm just gonna make my eraser slightly bigger. And all I'm going to do is just erase away those cuts there. And I could come in and remove those and whatever else I wanted to remove, but we'll keep it nice and simple. I've, I've also got the crop tool as well. So if I've got lots of background things going on and it's gonna take me a while to remove them all, I can crop this down so I've got less work. 
Once you're happy, we can then go to continue. We're going to save it as a cut image. We can give it a name and a tag as well. And I always advise giving it a tag. If you're going to bring in thousands upon thousands of images, you're never going to remember the names of them. So for example, I would give this a unicorn tag and then I could search my uploads using the word unicorn and it will bring up all of those files with that tag. So I do recommend adding a tag and then we can upload. We can select it and then insert to our canvas. And we're going to change the color on it to pink so that we know that this is our JPEG. So if I go back to the original download, we can actually open the PNG file as well because this one does have a PNG version. And again, exactly the same, I would hold my shift key and then send them all across to my pictures so that they're easy for me to find. And then I'm just going to send them across to my pictures so that they're easy for me to find. Again, we can go to upload, upload image, browse. We've got the PNG file here, so we're going to select that and open. So exactly the same as before, we need to choose the image type. So again, we're always going to select complex. However, this time, because it's a PNG, the background is already removed for us. So unless we wanted to specifically erase something, we actually don't need to do anything with this. We can go to continue, save it as a cut, give it a name. So we could add in PNG there if we wanted to, and of course, give it a tag and then upload. I can then insert that. Now you'll see that these are exactly the same. So the only part that's different is when we bring them into Design Space. For a JPEG, we have to remove the background. For a PNG, we don't, but they're exactly the same File. So when we bring them into Design Space Canvas, we would then treat them exactly the same. So just be aware, if you're installing a JPEG, you will need to remove the background. If it's a PNG, you will not need to remove the background, but they are both single layer flat images. As I say, we can turn them into multi-layer SVGs in Design Space, but we'll show that later. Nice and easy to bring in a JPEG or a PNG. As always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all again soon. Bye!